I'm Scott with Challenge Photography and today I'm going to go over the X-T32. Here you can see we have the X-T16, the X-T32, and the X-1. This one here is manual, this one here is manual and high speed sync, and this one here is TTTL, high speed sync and manual. So let's pull these out. They are just in there for size references so you can kind of see the size of this unit. Let's turn take a look at the side. Here we have the power on, we have the autofocus assist light. I always leave mine off, I don't even use it. But it's on there. Here's our sync port. Here's our autofocus assist light beam here. Let's flip it back over here. And let's go over the things on this unit. There are four custom functions. Like the X1, you have to press a button and you have to adjust all your custom functions from one screen. This one here, each one of these has its own custom function button. Which actually there's, really I guess there's, yeah there's four. Okay. I've tested this for a couple weeks now and I find it to be very reliable. I really like it. I like the form factor of it over the other ones. Um, I do still like the X-T16. It's so easy and it's, I call it a very simple, easy trigger. And I'll call it a dumb trigger too. So here we go to our first button. This is our modeling light. So we just turn our modeling light on, turn it off. If we hold it for two seconds, this engages the lock button function. So that locks everything. So then that way you can't accidentally bump it, accidentally press something, change any settings. It's automatically set, done. That's one of my favorite things about the new X system that it has locking buttons so I don't accidentally mess up. Let's go to the next one. The next one is our little beep function, our buzzer function. Turn it on, turn it off. If we hold it for a few seconds, this is our time sync interval between when the your flash fires from when your shutter button goes off or when you press your shutter button. So if you're doing something special like in some kind of a bulb shooting or a long delay um, shoot, you can set your flash to go off at a certain time and or to help sync your camera with your flash. Um, that's what that function is. I don't normally use it, but somewhere down the line maybe I will use it. I haven't figured it out yet. I don't know. So let's go into the next one. Here we are in channels. <clears throat> Excuse me. This goes from 1 to 32. Now, what's nice about this is when we dial these in, you can see these little digital dip switches kind of move over. When we get to 16, they'll just disappear. They will not be on there anymore. Because the little USB and the pin receivers do not have anything above 16. So that's why they're there. So all you have to do is if you have the USB or the pin receiver, you just have to make sure that the pin settings are identical to what's in the little digital display, which makes it super easy. So let's go back down to one. Oops. Kind of messed up there. Hit the wrong button. I'm viewing from an angle, not straight over the top, so it's kind of hard for me to see. All right, let's go into the custom functions of that button. So let's press it in. This here will override all your flashes, your strobes, or whatever you're using by when they shut off. I leave mine to off. I, don't, I, I want mine to stay on. I don't want mine to go into sleep mode. I don't like sleep mode. I don't want to sit there and half press the shutter button because I might miss a shot. So therefore, I leave mine off. I leave it off on my strobes and everything else. But that will override any custom function setting in your flash or strobe if you adjust it from inside this unit. Let's go to the next button. This here's our group button. We have A through F and 0 through 9. On the X system, you can only use A, B, C, D, and E. F and 0 through 9 are not accessible on the X system. Unless you are using the pin receiver or the um, USB receiver. Those are the only two that can go and use every single one of those. 
But if you're using the built-in receivers on your flashes and strobes for the new X system, you can only use A, B, C, D, and E. Let's go into the custom function button of that one. This here is for your sync port out the side. Mine is set to out. That means I want the sync port to go to a flash. If I set it to in, that is for the camera. Uh, again, I don't use this as a remote trigger for my camera or anything else. So I leave mine to out to the flash. But you can use it for either way you want. Here we have the test button is our next little button. So the little status light down here will, will blink, showing you that it's running. Here we have our selector dial. That helps us select our power settings. So when we go up through here, so when I'm in group or not wrong one, group mode, and I go through A, B, C, you can see they're all kind of set there to, and I can adjust each one of them to a different power setting. And we'll just hit select to select it. But now let's press the select button. We're going to press it and hold it down. One of the cool new features in this one that I like is now I have the option to adjust my power settings at one tenth power settings. On the old units, the old manual units, and basically the units that you see that you just bought, you can only adjust in one third increments. This allows me to adjust into one tenth increments, just like the Ellen Chrome. So now I can really, whoops, sorry. Kind of went out of there. I can really adjust my power settings. So I can go back to one thirds. Here is one tenths. If I can go, if my 600 goes to 256, so I have it set to 256. If your unit doesn't go to 256, it's 128. And I can set it to one tenth or one third power inc or increments. If you're using a studio strobe by Godox, you can go from 1 to 10. So this is the 1 to 10 system. And here's the 5 to 10 system, depending on what strobe you get. I'm going to adjust mine back to 1 10 on the 256. Okay, this is the new XT32. It's one of my favorite transmitters other than the XT16. Again, I don't use TTTL. But if I need ETTTL, I have the X1 receiver. The nice thing is they're really kind of inexpensive. Because when I brought my Pro Photo, that Air cost me 300 and something odd dollars, I think it was, when it first came out. And I thought that was just crazy for a transmitter. And then some people buy the Odin, which is another couple hundred dollar um, unit. And the only one that... I thought was the best out of any bunch was the Alien B Paul C. Buff Commander. That was worth the money and its weight in gold. It was a, a flash meter. You can do so many things with it. I'm pretty sure somewhere down the line, Godox will have something like that. And that will be the ultimate transmitter. Of course, it's going to be a little bit more money than this one here. I think is going to be uh, selling retail at around $52 to $56. So, again... This is the XT32. My name is Scott with Sean's Photography, and thank you for watching.